Thank you, James. The time is 10 minutes to six now for a Channel Island with a difference. There isn't a lot to do in Piffling Vale. Even I find the island's cultural life a bit uninspiring, and I'm a mouse. But some people do make an effort, like Antigone Fun, who once a week, when the sun's gone down, makes her way to the Piffling Royale cinema, whose single screen is tended to by the assiduous Herbert Koff. A new audio sitcom called Wooden Overcoats is inspired by life in the Channel Islands. It captures the oddities of island life with a cast of well-known names, including Belinda Lang, Andy Seacom, Chiara Baxendale, and guest stars Andy Hamilton and Julia Deakin. So how many attractions does your fate have? Is your fortune telling? Yes. George's carousel? Yes. <sighs> well, that's more than we had last year. Inexplicable. So what's it all about? Well, joining me on the line now is the programme's head writer, David Barnes. Good evening. Hello there. So can you tell us about Piffling and the idea behind it? Certainly I can, yes. Um, well, I was approached by a friend of mine, and uh, the actor Felix Trench, who plays Rajat. You just heard him in that clip there, and he said, I've got this great idea. I'd like to do something about two rival funeral directors and it was a ter terrific idea and he said would you like to turn it into a sitcom and so we sort of ran with that and I was looking for a location of where to do this and I thought well we could do it in a little sort of village somewhere in England but I thought that's sort of been done before and I thought well, it would be really nice to do something on an island and then we hit on trying to sort of create this new fictional channel island because I thought we, we want someone which is sort of you know midway between various other sort of countries that has been inspired by those cultures but it is very much a culture and community and you know, ideology all of its own and of course each of the channel islands also you know guernsey jersey they, they very run very differently and individual customs all over the shop so we thought we can have a lot of fun with this do something that's quite recognizable but really sort of push out and um sort of create our own little location for the sitcom so have you lived in the channel islands or visited us at all Myself, I, I must confess, I haven't, so I, I feel like a total fraud. But one of the other writers on our team uh, has family there, and he's one of the people who contributed a lot of ideas, a lot of the background detail. And actually, the uh, flatmate of our two producers is uh, from actually Jersey, and he was able to sort of vet some of the script and say, well, that's very ridiculous, and that's so ridiculous, it's actually true. So please leave it in. So we did have a, a bit of background fact checking there. <laughs> now, are you aware of This Is Ginzy by any chance? Pardon? I, have you heard of This Is Ginzy? I'm afraid, myself, I haven't. You have, oh, to enlighten I thought, me. you have to enlighten me. I thought there might have been some connection, because in the last so, a couple of years there have been two series which were um, commissioned and, and actually shown on, on TV on BBC Three and on satellite oh, channels by two local gentlemen, mm -hmm. and uh, very, very funny. This is a TV series. Um, we're not aware of a third series yet, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. Wonderful. Taking the mickey out of people in Guernsey. So is that what you're doing? Are we not? Well, actually, I don't believe we really, um, we really are as such. Of course, the characters in the fictional island of Piffling are all very eccentric. You know, the local the lady who uh, runs the sweet shop is also the local chief of police. There's a <laughs> vicar who doesn't quite know what religion he's meant to be preaching from. And they're quite eccentric, but they're all really, I think, really lovable characters. It, it, it's one of those stereotypes you sometimes get in series which are set in a village or an island where it's a closed community. They don't trust outsiders. Before, no, no, that's not true. Most... Well, these communities are exceptionally welcoming, and that's what we wanted to do with this. So the, the humour for us in this series is that it's an island full of very welcoming, warm and fun individuals. And the, the, the stranger, Eric Chapman, who's one of the funeral directors who sets up shop in the first episode, is welcomed by everyone. They all love him. And it's our two main characters, Rajard and Antigone, who've been there all their lives, who just don't get on with people, and they're viewed as the outsiders because they, they just don't get on. They don't join in. And that's what we really wanted to play with. It's sort of... Um, a situation where everyone is... The people who, uh, who fail are sort of harming themselves, really. They should just be getting out there and having fun and getting the spirit of things like everyone else, and they just don't. And that's how the series sort of goes along for eight episodes. Now, on your blog, you write the show's turnover would make anybody at the BBC gibber <laughs> ah, into early retirement. I wondered if that would come back yeah, and Yeah, what me. do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I Simply that, I, um, as far as I understand, to actually uh, create a series on the scale that we've done, I mean, I, this series does have a cast of 
25 actors all in all. The production team had over 50 people, and we did have um, eight episodes. Those eight episodes were actually all recorded in, in about four days. The, the money we actually did it with was, was uh, quite low. We took out a private loan to be able to book a recording studio, but everybody else really donated their time purely voluntarily, all the actors, all the directors, the writers, because they really enjoyed the concept. They really enjoyed the scripts that they got. They just thought, this is going to be a really fun project. And this is the benefit, I think, of being a small independent company we can make our own decisions that we, we can do something on this scale for rather less money than perhaps the, the BBC would be able, able to because we, we can we can do that and people will sort of set aside a bit of time um, and I think that's really what's created what I hope is a very very in, enjoyable series because we had so many people so much goodwill and uh, those people are still talking about it now I'll, I'll have to let you get away with that. I don't think I can argue with what you've said there. It sounds very economically made. <laughs> Thank you. So, so for anybody who doesn't understand what a mm. podcast is and how they can get to hear it, what, what, how do you get it on the podcast? What, what exactly is it? The podcast itself is just, uh, just an, um, essentially, well, what this is, we wouldn't over coats, uh, each episode of being half an hour, is essentially just a radio show which you hear exclusively on the internet. You can't hear it on a conventional radio, but you can go to anywhere where you traditionally download your podcast. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to actually mention any specific podcasting clients on the BBC. I know you don't want to favour any particular oh, one. Oh, go but... on then, otherwise we won't be able to find it. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, iTunes is our main one. If you, if you go to iTunes and you type in wooden overcoats, you will be able to, it will pop up. You've got a little blue logo with two jaunty coffins and wooden overcoats written on it. Um, otherwise, there are other places wherever you download a podcast from. And um, if you just, or if you just type us into, into Google, you should be able to find us. If you just go onto iTunes and you just subscribe and you download us. You should get every episode just popping, popping up on your iTunes or your phone or your iPad, your laptop, um, every Thursday. Alternatively, if that's, I mean, I, I personally, my phone's too old to even do that. If you go to our website, www.woodenovercoats.com, you can also listen to us there. And it's really easy. You can just go in there, click, sit back, get a cup of tea, relax, and hopefully enjoy many half hours of uh, good funeral-based comedy. <laughs> and it's, it's free. This is free it's online. Totally I mean, free. surely you want to take it further, get it on the radio, on TV. Don't you want to make money out of it? Well, this is the thing is, uh, right now, is trying to uh, find out how you can monetize podcasts. And the first thing, really, you need to do is to try and create something that sounds just as professional and, and, and just as good as, as uh, many of the conventional forms of radio or, or television and that kind of thing. And I believe that's what we've tried to do. Our, our producers, um, John Wakefield and Andy Goddard, are terrific at what they do, the technical wizards. If you listen to the, the episodes themselves, it's really like you're actually there on the island, all the background, the sound effects. Um, in terms of trying to make money long term, um, this is something that we are still debating about, you know, it would be very nice if we could go on to do further episodes later and down the line. We'd have to have a long discussion about it. Um, certainly at the moment, we are very much focused, however, on we've got these episodes, we've made them, we think they're great. We just need to try and focus on making as large an audience as we can, because before we can make the decisions about do we raise more money, do we ask for money from sponsors, etc., we need to prove to them that we've made something that people really like. And so the more people who listen to us, the more chance we have of being able to make further episodes a possibility. And what are people telling you, your listeners, who are waiting anxiously for the next episode to come out? Indeed. Well, at the moment, uh, we've got uh, four episodes have been released so far. There's another four still to come. Episode five will be popping up on iTunes or wherever this coming Thursday. And as I say, all is entirely free to the listener. You need to pay a single penny for this, so you'll get four hours of comedy entirely free. Um, what I would certainly say for the upcoming episodes is just um, we've got some incredibly enjoyable plot lines coming up, some very, very silly stories. There's one of my favourites, which involves um, the two undertakers, Rajard and Eric, having to uh, have a sort of duel of the funerals, rather. They both have a, a seagull that they have to bury in the quickest amount of time, and the winner <laughs> manages to get a treasure chest and that kind of thing. But also, we've got some, especially if you've been listening from the beginning, and I think that's what makes this a bit different from other sort of sitcoms, what the characters really develop and they change, and the way they are at the end of the series is very different from the way they are at the beginning. So if you really get into the series over the course of eight episodes, I think you'll really, truly grow to love these characters, and you'll certainly want to see more of them, and we would certainly like to be able to show you more of them later. Well, very best of luck with wooden much. overcoats. So that's what we have to look up, wooden overcoats. That's David Barnes, the head writer. Nice to talk to you, David. And Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. So wooden overcoats is what you're looking for, and uh, it's all about Piffling Island. Hmm, 6 o'clock. <laughs>
on FM, AM and online. Passionate about island life. BBC Radio Guernsey.